This is going to be friendly fire Christianity. And we're going to look at Ephesians chapter 6. So Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. It says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Today, many times it seems like Christians are trying to be strong in themselves and in the power of their own might. Uh, they don't seem to need God. They don't seem to need anybody else. They're just trying to be strong in themselves. And they think they're right. They think everyone else is wrong. And that's the mindset of many Christians. Now look at verse 11 and 12. It says, Put on the whole armor of God, that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Today, many times it also seems like Christians have forgotten who the enemy is. They have forgotten that our enemies are the spiritual wickedness in high places, the unclean spirits, Satan, and his false ministers, not each other, not other Christians. Other Christians aren't your enemy. Every born-again believer is in the body of Christ, and you are all members of the same body. Ephesians six seventeen in the same chapter, verse 17, talks about taking the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. But Christians are using another sword, and they are using their own words to bash and destroy their own kind. There is a prophecy about Christians coming back at the second coming with Jesus Christ and we got our glorified bodies. In Joel chapter 2 and verse 8, it says, Neither shall one thrust another. They shall walk everyone in his path. And when they fall upon the sword, they shall not be wounded. So in our glorified bodies, we're going to have where it's going to be immortal bodies, we can fall on the sword, it won't hurt us. But look what it says, neither shall one thrust another. So there is no friendly fire. No one in the Lord's army is shooting the other one off of his horse because they are trying to get a more preeminent place in line behind Jesus Christ. Nobody's trying to get the preeminent place when we come back with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is going to have preeminence. And the people are in unity. Now look at Ephesians six thirteen. It says, Wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Sometimes it seems like many Christians who are living right and giving out the gospel of Jesus Christ are also having to use their whole armor of God, not just against the spiritual wickedness in high places, but against their own brothers in Christ who are possessed by the spiritual wickedness in high places. Sometimes you will be going along and serving Jesus Christ, and your brother in Christ is supposed to have your back, but instead he will stab you in the back with what he will refer to as the sword of the Spirit. That's because he's using the Bible to hurt you. Some Christians are using the King James Bible to hurt other Christians. And they go back and forth attacking each other with the word of God. And men who are Bible believers that have minor disagreements are biting and devouring one another. And it's very disgusting to see. This division and strife and constant attacking each other is very carnal. And Paul warned the Corinthians about this. Uh, they are so contentious with each other. And Paul also warned about men preaching Christ of contention. It says in Philippians 1.16, the one preached Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds. So when men are angry, and all they do is complain and bash and attack others, they are contentious, and they make it harder for other Christians who are trying to serve God. Paul said they add affliction to his bonds. And now look at Ephesians 6.14. It says, Stand therefore, having your loins go about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. You can be walking around with your loins go about with truth. You have the right Bible. 
you have on the breastplate of righteousness because you're living right and trying to serve God, and some other Christian gets jealous and tries to stab you through your breastplate. He wants to be Diotrephes and have the preeminent place, even over Jesus Christ. Ephesians 6.15 And your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. The Bible says, Beautiful are the feet of them which preach the gospel of peace. Some Christians today only have feet running to mischief. They are busy bodies and other men's matters. They will find something they don't like about another Christian and try to dig up dirt on them so they can ruin their testimony or their ministry. They are only helping the devil. They are not helping the Lord. If you ruin another man's ministry, a man who is winning souls, then you are only helping Satan. You are not helping God. You are stabbing a brother in the back who is working on stealing Satan's children away from him through the gospel of Jesus Christ. Ephesians 6.16 Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. If the shield of faith, if it were possible for it to be bent up or to get dense in it, then the average Bible believer who is trying to serve God is going to need repairs in his shield because of the attacks, not just from the lost world, but from Bible believers. But if you have the shield of faith, and you believe it when the Bible says, All that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution, then you will know why you're being attacked. Sometimes other Christians will attack you more than the lost world will attack. And then Ephesians six seventeen, it says, And take the helmet of salvation. And the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. I'm glad that the helmet of salvation can't be busted by stones that are thrown by fellow Christians. I'm glad it is bulletproof for when they lie in wait with a sniper rifle to get a headshot on those who want to serve God and that aren't worried about self-promotion. That's the big thing with these men. The word about promoting themselves. The word about the word about getting the most attention. That's the problem with the internet. One of the problems with it is that everybody's trying to get famous. Why are you trying to get famous? Can't you be a nobody for Jesus Christ? Nobody even has to know your name. Nobody even knows who I am on here. The majority of people have absolutely no idea who I am. They don't know my name. Uh, there's no need in making a name. If you remember back in Genesis... When they were building the Tower of Babel, they said, let us go make us a name. Uh, remember when Satan and Isaiah it said, I will be like the Most High. He's trying to get a preeminent place. Uh, remember Saul. He was a good king. He was okay. But that was when he was little in his own sight. And then when he got a big head, that's when he... All the bad things started happening, and the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. All throughout the Bible you'll see people who think so much of themselves and are trying to be somebody that they're not. They get taken down because pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. And many Christians, and especially contentious preachers it's like they're just hateful all the time they're like the Grinch they're just mad and hate everybody if it were possible and we weren't getting sinless bodies soon in the millennium they would probably hide up in a mountain somewhere and never come down because they're so mad at everybody because this person has a better job than they have this person has a better car than they have this person has more followers than they have and they're mad because they're not getting as as much of a rule over as many cities as they have. But we wrestle not against flesh and blood, again, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. But sometimes that spiritual wickedness gets a hold of other Christians and makes them act like mean, angry, spirited Pharisees. They are bitter and they envy and cause strife. 
They cause divisions. They come out with their hobby horse that they want to teach and teach that everyone who doesn't believe in this is not saved and they're going to hell and say, if you listen to this preacher who teaches this, that's not what, not what I'm teaching, then if you like him, you're going to go to hell. Just They add all these works to the gospel. Notice that all these guys with these hobby horse doctrines that will end up adding so many works to the gospel. And notice they will mention that doctrine. No matter what their message or sermon is, they're going to throw that in there. They're going to talk about how uh, the Jews, there's no such thing as a Jew anymore. And that God hates the Jews or something else. They'll just keep throwing it in there so they can brainwash you. And James three fourteen and 15 says, But if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not and lie not against the truth. This wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. And then James three sixteen, For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. I just don't understand the hatred that is being shown between Christians. It couldn't be nothing else but jealousy. Most of the time when somebody talks bad about somebody, they're jealous. Most of the time when a preacher talks bad about another preacher, they're not just doing it to expose a false doctrine and to warn their flock about a bad wolf out there. They're doing it because they're jealous or and because they're not getting as much attention and because they think they can do it better than he can do it. And they're jealous because they're not being recognized. And if they would quit thinking about themselves and just be lowly in their minds, then they wouldn't have this problem. Uh, they wouldn't be so depressed all the time. People who are worried about being somebody that they're not are constantly going to be depressed because they can never be that person that's in their mind, their fantasy of who they want to be. Uh, Philippians 2, 3 says, Let nothing be done through strife or vain glory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than themselves. Everything these guys are doing, it seems like, is being done for vain glory. They're not lowly in mind. They're high-minded. They're, they're haughty. They think that they're better than everybody else. They think they know more than everybody else and that nobody can correct them and it gets to a point where they start adding other um, standards to being saved than believing the gospel but the slander and name calling and biting and devouring one another this is done all out of jealousy for each other jealousy of their ministry their following their income their car their success and if another christian is successful then why can't you just be happy for them? If my brother in Christ is successful in the ministry, then I am happy for him. Why wouldn't you be happy if a man is leading people to Jesus Christ and has a large following? A man they attack all the time is Robert Breaker, who has like 200,000 subscribers and thousands of people watch him and learn the Bible from his videos. And they attack him every day every week because his videos are monetized so when people click his videos he's making money off the videos but i mean if he's giving the gospel in every videos he's not um compromising and trimming down the message to continue to get views why should you att attack him and his ministry and if you continuously attack your other brothers in Christ, you're obviously led by the devil. It's not the Holy Spirit telling you to expose every preacher and teacher out there other than yourself. And if someone is doing labor for the Lord, then think highly of them and give them credit. Don't bash them. First uh, Thessalonians five twelve through 13 says, And we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake, and be at peace among yourselves. I'm weary of Bible teachers and preachers who never compliment or associate with another person's ministry. It is like they are in some kind of competition. 
about who can be the greatest. Remember when the disciples was talking about who shall be the greatest. That seems that's what it's on everybody's mind is they want to be better than everyone else. And there are so many great pastors and teachers who are doing great things for God. I couldn't even name them all off. Men like Danny Castle, Donnie Dalton, David Hoffman, Bevins Welder, Robert Breaker, David J. Stewart, Jeff Owens, Gene Kim, C.T. Townsend, Phil Kidd, Sammy Allen, David Peacock. Reg Kelly, Sam Gipp, so many great preachers and teachers, yet all these men are bashed by others and put down by others on a regular basis. There are just so many great men to learn from. Why not learn from all of them? If they've got something you don't agree with, then just don't agree with it. But they all have something you can learn. And yet people get their cult leader who will bash everyone who doesn't believe just like him And if their cult leader exposes another pastor or teacher, then that man basically has a hit out on himself. I mean, if he makes a video exposing another pastor, then that pastor is pretty much getting bashed by thousands of little minions of that cult leader. But recently, some professed Christians made a video about waterboarding an independent Baptist evangelist that they didn't like. And they even put his personal cell phone number out on the internet so all of his enemies could call him and harass him. And they even got his preaching schedule and slandered him to every pastor on the list so that they would cancel his meetings. They even made trading cards with pictures of preachers on them, bashing the preachers. And then they sold them for money. And that is completely wicked. If anybody else was doing anything for money, they'd be saying, oh, they're doing this for filthy lucre. But yet they can put pictures of other preachers on a a trading card, bashing them and sell it for money, and that's okay. But Robert Breaker, he can't make a video about the Bible and get paid from just from people clicking it. And I'm not just talking about some tiny little ministry that's doing this these are, this is a pretty big ministry, and these are contentious men that have their own churches, and they're constantly attacking everyone that doesn't agree with them, and they're presently planting churches all over the country. I'm not doubting their salvation or their sincerity. I don't know their heart, but I believe the devil will use them to get our rights taken away as Christians, just like he's using Westboro Baptist Church. And you are already seeing it headed that way with people talking about the Bible being banned in some places. But moving on, there are Christians who will look down on a preacher or other Christians who have been divorced even. And they will shoot them down. They'll say, hey, he's been divorced and remarried and he's a pastor. And they'll bash his ministry and shoot him down to others. And then all his followers will shoot him down as well. And someone told a divorced and remarried preacher that I know, they said, I can't preach for you or fellowship with you, but I really hope God blesses you and your ministry. And the divorced and remarried pastor was like, so God can have something to do with me, but you can't have something to do with me? And that about sums it up. If you look down on another Christian and won't fellowship with your brother in Christ who is trying to live right and isn't involved in any type of sin like fornication and going out and doing drugs and getting drunk and everything else. I mean, if he's trying to live right and he he wants to fellowship with you, then why couldn't you? You're part of the same body. You're brothers in Christ. If you can't fellowship with him because of something from his past, then you're just being a Pharisee and you think you're more righteous than God is. You do know that Jesus Christ still lives in every divorced Christian. And you do know that he still forgives someone that's being divorced just like he forgive you for your sin. And you are members in the same body as he is. Galatians 6 1 says, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, ye which are spiritual, restore such an one in the spirit of meekness, considering thyself, lest thou also be tempted. When you badmouth your fellow Christians, you're just betraying 
your brothers in Christ. You are being like Judas, not like Jesus. Paul had some disagreements with Mark, but eventually said he was profitable from the ministry. And Peter had some disagreements with Paul. Uh, but Peter called Paul a beloved brother in his epistle. As Christians, we need to love each other and be friends. And I love to see Christians come together and be friends, even with their minor disagreements. If you have been fighting with another Christian, call them up and get it right. We are at war with the flesh and the devil. We don't need to be at war with each other. The Bible says, Be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. And that verse may not be as interesting as Revelation and verses about the rapture and second coming, but it will probably help you in your Christian life more than any of those verses. Uh, Ephesians 6.18 says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. So pray for each other. Even if you aren't one of these Christians going around mad at everybody, you need to also have grace and be long-suffering to those Christians who are beating you up with words. And they can get right and change if you pray for them. But this has been Friendly Fire Christianity.